A recently released report by IDMC just very recently reported that in 2014, 11 million people were displaced within their country by conflicts and violence. That is the equivalent of one person every three seconds. This is a 15% increase from the previous year. Serving the needs of the most vulnerable is at the heart of many spiritual traditions in every disaster, in every emergency, in every conflict. Many communities rally around their faith. It should be no surprise then that faith-based organizations are already an important part of the international architecture. Six of the 15 NGOs or NGO coalitions represented on the board of SPHERE have a faith-based ethos, as do five of the 13 NGOs on the UK's Disasters Emergency Committee. Yet the international humanitarian system still, still falls short of leveraging the full potential of faith-based actors at the national, local, and community level. To fully engage with local faith-based networks, I think there are four challenges we must address. Firstly, there is a lack of evidence on the impact of faith-based organizations on individual and community resilience. Any humanitarian in the field has seen the impact that working with faith-based networks can have. Yet, we lack the hard data to back up this anecdotal evidence and to create clear pathways for engagements in different contexts. Secondly, there is a lack of trust. Not just between faith-based and secular actors, many faith communities are divided among and between themselves. The foundation of trust is dialogue, which is why initiatives to share knowledge, create linkages, and promote exchanges of experience are so important. It is also why I think it is so important to find common ground, for example, through initiatives to link the four humanitarian principles to set of values of different faiths. Thirdly, there is a need to change our mindset. Many humanitarian organizations, both faith-based and secular, operate around notions of aid as charity. All too often, this narrative is disempowering for people affected by crises and disasters. I feel that humanitarian action should be about solidarity, but it must be grounded on the foundation of the humanitarian principles. Fourthly, there is a need for clear, implementable actions to improve partnerships. The reality is that no organization or group can operate in isolation in today's complex world. Partnerships are about encouraging institutions to work across traditional boundaries. There are many good examples, which I'm sure you were sure you were here today, but I would, in the, in the presence of Dr. Halmi Albana on this table, let me just say CAFOD and Islamic Relief had a very good example of setting out <clears throat> some good assessments together in Central African Republic. There are many of these that must be replicated. Thank you, Dr. Jamila.